Well, today I'm going to build the windlass mounting plate um, and just generally try and get it fit on the boat. Uh, so I found this 3 8 plate. Uh, I used it for something else and this is basically what I'm going to draw out on there. Hopefully a little better of a drawing than that. Uh, and then, yeah, I'll be cleaning it up and fitting it. I'm Taryn, this is Logan, and this is Max. Our life rarely goes as planned, and this story is no different. But we are determined to rebuild our beautiful steel boat, even stronger than she was before. And we're bringing you along with us. That's why I'm happy I made the cardboard template. And so basically I, I measured everything out the other day to make this uh, winch base plate. And um, having the horizontal gypsy on the windlass means the chain's gonna drop just behind as it comes around. And there's not really a, a separate spot on the windlass where it goes through, so it'll go through the deck or or whatever. I'd like to have a raised fitting so that any water that's on the deck doesn't just go straight down into the chain locker with it. Um, so I was going to weld a stainless pipe through and use that as the as the spurling pipe. Um, but as it turns out I cannot get the right material bent here. Um, I did some reading. Uh, where's the book? Anyways, I've got some books on metal chip building and they say that the Sperling pipe or the Haas pipe, which doesn't matter which one is which, really, um, Schedule 40 is generally not going to be heavy enough because of the wear of the chain riding over it all the time. Uh, and to use Schedule 80. So Schedule 80 stainless pipe is extremely expensive and very hard to get bent. I got a quote today of uh, $300 for the bend, for one bend and a uh, hundred dollars for a two foot piece of pipe. So, and it's not here, it's on the mainland. So I'd have to go uh, get it either couriered or, or go and drop it off myself. So looking at an extra, you know, probably 50 bucks to get it shipped over here or, um, I don't know how many, what it would cost to go get it, a couple hundred. We re re ended up redesigning this. We're not gonna use a pipe uh, for the spurling pipe all the way down. So I'm just gonna, I have a piece of schedule 40 pipe that wasn't long enough. Um, and I'm just gonna cut that and use that to get through the deck. And then from there, I'm gonna use, uh, basically build like a, a channel uh, with a couple of loops over top of it um, once I find some material to do that and then instead of having the chain running straight on the stainless it'll be on I think we're gonna line it with plastic of some kind some HDP or or possibly even just PVC we haven't figured that one out yet but that is the the new design, the new thought. And we'll see if we can make that happen. Um, but anyways, this is why I'm happy I built it out of a, a cardboard template before I put the template straight onto the steel and cut it. Originally, this is where the, the gypsy was gonna drop onto here. Um, and I've actually put this 
You see how the front of the windlass kind of comes up on a slope here? Um, our chain locker door is going to come and open up like this in front of here. So I ended up leaving a bit of a gap in front because this is going to be welded straight to the deck beam. Um, so by leaving that gap there, the door will still be able to open without hitting this. Um, which has pushed me back. Well, whatever that is boat I don't know where my tape measure went but it has pushed me back about an inch and a quarter so now I have to redesign this template to come out more back this way and that way and then this piece of stainless pipe will just be like this, sticking through the deck, and the chain will drop right into that. But standing up ways. Anyways, so that is the new plan. Uh, let's see how this goes. Okay, so after redoing my drawing here. I've got it uh, set up like this. So I've got the pipe notched out to fit the windlass. Um, this here is about an inch so that'll stick up and keep a lot of water out of there. Uh, obviously it won't keep everything out. So, oh. See, our chain is coming over. Like so. got the plate uh, mostly done uh, cut out and smooth and hole punches for the or just a centering punch for the um, for the bolt holes uh, and everything seems to work together so now I just have to drill out the holes and start fitting it into the boat I mean, I could probably drill the holes after anyways, but so that's it. And then with the winch gasket there, uh, it looks something like that. But I have to notch a bit out of that gasket if I do that. Either way, I don't think it's going to matter. So this is going to end up sitting in here like this. Right about there somewhere. And then I just have to run some, uh, probably flat bar to the back just to strengthen it up and down ways. 
uh, side to side, it'll be strengthened when it all gets welded to the deck. So the deck will be notched around this and welded to it. Um, so then I'll have some bars coming back, some probably uh, flat bar coming back to here on either side. And then with the deck going over top and being welded all the way around, that should give it enough stability because it's mostly this way that it's going to be pulling. So yeah, just have to figure a way to do that. Drill the holes and then I can start mounting this. And then began the assembly process. Earlier today, I went and uh, spent some money in town, got myself some more grinding discs, some more cutting discs, uh, some of this, and the stainless wire there for the wire feed is for this. four foot chunk of two inch by three sixteenths flat bar and a six foot chunk of half inch round bar. Crazy expensive. Those two pieces of metal are $135. But that is going to be um, all the material to make our spurling pipe, which we are not gonna do out of a pipe anymore. Once I get the, the windlass plate and the supports in, then uh, I'll start making the spurling pipe because uh, everything will be kind of in position and then I can just measure it for where it needs to go. Stainless here is going to be where it goes through the <clears throat> windlass plate through the deck. So I'm going to have, I don't know how much of a drop through here yet. And then <clears throat> I'm going to make a, like a shoot out of this flat bar. And then once I have a chute, I'll cut this, I'll put sides on it. I'll put a couple of loops over top so the chain can't jump out. Yeah, and then I'll drill it and I'll put some kind of um, liner on here, like HDPE or some kind of slippery plastic. I'll drill this and put a, a strip of it on here. Um, so it'll just help the chain slide better and um, make this last a little bit longer anyways because the um the chain covered in salt water and sand is fairly abrasive so that's the plan for this i've got it marked out so i'm gonna do a 40 degree bend well i'll start at 35 degrees um i think 40 is gonna work be where we end up but i'll try 35 and the bend will be at 11 inches and then I'll leave a, a tail on it so I can fine tune how far it needs to drop. Uh, 
and I can tack that all in place and get that figured out as we go. Just getting ready to uh, tack the spurling pipe in place and get that all ready to go. And uh, when I was switching over the roll of stainless, I blew a blood vessel in my finger. It's always a pain in the ass. If I hold it down too far, my finger fills with blood and it turns into a big non-flexible sausage. Basically. There's my finger and there's what it normally looks like. So it makes it really difficult to do anything with it. Frustrating as all hell. Hopefully I can get this tacked up yeah, and dealt with tonight so that I can let this finger heal up a bit. Take a day off tomorrow. It's not one thing, it's another. But I was able to get it all tacked up and ready before heading out to heal up my finger. Thanks so much for watching, and join us next week to see the final product of our new windlass plate.